This is our CCC worker statue at the Pennsylvania Lumber Museum. Uh, and he's one of over 70 identical castings that are placed all around the United States uh, to commemorate the work of the CCC. CCC stands for Civilian Conservation Corps. It was a public works program uh, initiated under Franklin Roosevelt as an answer to uh, the nearly one quarter of Americans that were out of work during the Great Depression. Uh, the CCC had more camps in Pennsylvania than any other state other than California, uh, 100 and, more than 150 of them all together over the nine year course of the program. And uh, a lot of their legacy can still be observed in the state parks and state forests throughout Pennsylvania today. Uh, the CCC is a big part of our exhibit here at the museum and we're very grateful for folks like John Eastlake who are a, essentially a walking encyclopedia of information about the CCC who volunteer their time and uh, energy and, and talk with folks at events like our Bark Feelers Festival uh, about what the CCC did and why they're so important and uh, why uh, we're so grateful that we have uh, a lot of their legacy still with us in, in our state parks and forests today. So thank you, John. Uh, my name is John Eastlake. I'm a retired forester. And uh, probably for the last six or seven years, my wife and I have had a little exhibit of uh, CCC, the story of the Civilian Conservation Corps primarily in Pennsylvania. Uh, the Civilian Conservation Corps was a depression era program that was the brainchild of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Franklin envisioned when he ran against Hoover getting the people out of the depression with a Civilian Conservation Corps. Originally, it was called Emergency Work Act, and amazingly, it was passed by uh, Congress and acted in law in 27 days or a very, very short period. The first camp was at Edinburgh, Virginia. The second camp was in Pennsylvania, near Marionville, on uh, the Allegheny. National Forest. And Franklin envisioned his program not only in conserving resources, but also conserving the lives of primarily young men. Uh, the, the fellows were to be between the ages of 18 and 25. Originally, they were to be dependents of people who were on some type of, of government assistance. They were to be in good health because the, the work was strenuous. And in some states, they, it was mandatory for the guys to have six teeth because they, they had to be able to, to eat uh, properly <laughs> to, do, to do the work. Uh, they were to be unmarried. The, the War Department then, was uh, then it was a, the uh, the army, and the army provided everything that the CCC boy needed: uh, food, shelter, clothing, uh, medical care, equipment. The bulk of the camps in in Pennsylvania were under the jurisdiction of the Department of Forest and Waters. The, the theme was to put these camps where they were needed uh, conservation-wise. Some of the camps ended up in, in, in old sawmill sites that were abandoned, old logging towns. Uh, I had been a forester for 40 years and uh, actually started out with the Department of Force from Waters, which was the the, uh, the outfit that worked directly with the Forest Service in the management of the CCC camps, and every almost every day 
I had seen what the CCC boys had done, the, uh, the roads that I traveled, the uh, trails that I hiked, the trees that I saw, the parks that I had visited. Like in Potter County here, you've got Cherry Springs and Holy Bull, and Lyman Lake, and Friday Place. So they, they did a heck of a lot. Okay, we're at the site uh, of the Dyer Farm Circle Group Camping Area. Uh, according to the 1936 uh, Civilian Conservation Corps Annual that covered camps in Pennsylvania, this was proposed as the Black Forest State Park. And for some reason, the, the role of the CCC camp, uh, which was the Dyer Farm Camp, had uh, changed and they, they that uh, state park planning was, was scrapped. This is uh, one of probably about eight cabins, uh, one of which was uh, taken down uh, uh, log by log and, and taken to the Lumber Museum. I think about 30 years ago. Okay, we're we're here at uh, the former Dyer Farm CCC camp, and at one of uh, two very unique stone uh, spring shelters. Uh, the the other one is further up uh, up the stream here, the Dyer Branch of Young Woman's Creek. The the, the uh, boys from the camp, which isn't too far away from here, uh, individual members would work on these projects. And the, the idea here is to, to tell you that these accomplishments that the CCC boys did are still, still here. Uh, the, the, the roads, the trails, the spring shelters, the vistas, uh, the, the trees that they had planted, like right behind them are some Norway spruce, which is uh, not a native tree. Uh, they become native uh, Americanized, so to speak, by the CCC. Okay, the legacy that these guys left behind is prob probably one thing that a lot of people just don't comprehend is the fact that these guys were part of the greatest generation. About, there's no exact number, but it's around 65 to 70 percent of these guys went into World War II. And, and uh, because of their, their training in, in uh, Civilian Conservation Corps, they had they adopted a can, can do anything attitude. They were in great physical shape. They were regimented. They could work with one another, and this was very evident to the to the military, the army guys, the the generals uh, at that time. Uh, General Clark, he he always said it hadn't been for the CCC that they wouldn't have won. Uh, World War II, so we're, we're speaking uh, English instead of German because of these guys. And then on the, on the flip side, the civilian side, we've got all these state parks, all these uh, roads and trails and, and tree plantations, and just a tremendous legacy that they've uh, left us. To thank a CCC boy for not only for your freedom but for the state park or state forest that you're you're visiting.